by living as a child of God. You can't lift him up by living as a child of the devil. You bring shame to him. So it's important that we lift him up by living as a child of God. As the songwriter said, let the world and you the Savior see. And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto thee. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, as we so humbly approach your holy throne of grace, O God, Father, thanking you and praising you for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, and for all that you have plans to do. Father, you are the great I am, and beside thee there is none other. We thank you, O God, for your blessings, great and small, for being better to us than we have been to our own selves. We thank you, O God, for thinking so much of us that you took time and woke us up today. For that alone, we can say thank you. We thank you for all of your many blessings, great and small. We thank you for this another opportunity to speak to this thy people, O God. Father, we pray that you might remember as your word goes forth, O God, Father, that it might go from breast to breast, that it might go from heart to heart, that it might go from the east coast all the way to the west coast, O God, to the end that you might be the one that gets all of the glory, that you, O God, might be the one that gets all of the honor, and that you might be the one that gets all of the praise in our lives. Father, this is our desire, this is our prayer at this hour, and we will be very careful not to forget to give thy name and praise. Amen. Amen. And we say unto you all, good evening, and may God bless you all. Thank God truly for this another day that God has so graciously allowed our eyes to see. This is a day that we have never seen before. And when it passes, it will be a day that we will never see again. So we thank God and we praise God in this day. Thank God truly for his only begotten son, Jesus, whom he sent down to die for you and I. He died that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Thank God truly for the founders of this church, Elder and Sister Lightfoot Solomon Mishaw. We thank God truly for their preachings and their teachings. Thank God truly for the stand standards of righteousness. Thank God for our present leadership, Elder Howard, giving honor to him in his absence, giving honor to the First Lady, deacons that are assembled, to the saints of the Most High, we say good evening or good afternoon, and may God bless you all. Thank God truly for the scroll that reads obedience, love, reverence, and respect. It is first to God, and then to leadership, and then to one another. Thank God truly for those that have pressed their way out to fellowship with us, to join in in the celebration and the dedication of a new life, presenting the child unto God. There's no greater thing than to present a child unto the Lord, and we thank God truly for that. Sparks from the Anvil, found on page number three in your programs. Little nuggets that you can carry around with you, keep your mind focused and meditating on the Lord. Number one, this is on page number three in your programs. Number one says, it is not your evil thoughts that harm you, but your intentions to carry out such thoughts. The scripture says that the first estate of every man is of the earth earthy. It's not, as I said, your evil thoughts that harm you. It's when that evil thought comes into your mind, do you entertain it and accomplish what that thought is? Do you dispose of it and say, Lord, give me strength to keep right on running? Number two says, the way you think is the way you will go. If you are not going right, change your way of thinking. Amen. So very true. The way you think is the way you will go. If you are not going right, a chain, then change your way of thinking. You look at it spiritually or physically. Physically, as my wife and I were courting. She showed me once or twice how to get around Manassas. And 
After going through Manassas once or twice, she didn't have to give me no more directions because I knew her house was over here, and this place was over here, and that place was over there. So I followed with my mind. I said, okay, if I'm right here, her house is over there. I know I'm going to have to make some turns, but I know I'm going that direction. Same thing goes with heaven, church. If you know that heaven is over here, don't go this direction. If you know heaven is right straight ahead, you shouldn't be going to the right. You shouldn't be going to the left. As one minister said, he said, in order to get to heaven, turn right and then keep straight. Once you make that right hand turn, head it to Christ. Don't make any other turns. Just keep straight and heaven will be your home. Amen? Amen. Number three, say God's plan is to fill you with his spirit and your mind. That's what God's plan is, to fill you with his spirit and your mind. Amen? On the reverse side, it said, regardless of what man may do or say, the Holy Bible tells us that the Lord still reigneth and does so here in the earth with eyes to see and ears to hear. <clears throat> Excuse me. With eyes to see and ears that hear, and he even knows the very intent of the heart of those who sit in the seat of power. So people, be assured of this fact, that God rewards for deeds done. Amen. So very true. You can't hide from God. God knows your heart. He knows your intent. He knows your mind. He knows what you're going to do before you even do it. Amen. So let us fashion ourselves accordingly. And as Brother Anthony would always say, in order to get into God's kingdom, you've got to do things God's way. Amen. Thank God truly for this another opportunity to speak to God's people. Thank God truly for the saved wife that he's blessed me with. I thank God for our children, for the jobs that he's blessed us with. Truly he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. I thank God truly for his blessings, great and small, for seeing all the beautiful faces that have pressed their way out to fellowship with us today. I was thinking the Lord was speaking to me, and a few questions popped up in my head. I ask those questions. I want you to be honest with yourself. Don't worry about me. Be honest with yourself. How many of you all speed? I'll be the first to say, I do. How many of you all know that speeding is against the law of the land, but yet you do it anyway? How many of you all feel that there are certain reasons or circumstances that allow you to have that excuse to be able to speed? Well, I'm late for work. I got an appointment to make. This person in front of me is going slow. Church, I like to talk to your hearts. The thought that the Lord has laid on my heart is the presumptuous sins and the secret faults. The presumptuous sins and the secret faults. Deacon, if you'd be so kind. Presumptuous, as defined by Webster Dictionary, or I think this one was Wikipedia, I think, is bold mm -hmm. or too daring. Bold or too daring. Mm -hmm. You know that something is wrong, but yet you do it anyway. That's bold. Amen. For example, you know a cop is sitting over there on the side of the road, Instead of slowing up, you hit on the gas and go even faster. That's bold. Mm -hmm. Knowing that something is wrong, mm -hmm. knowing that something is sin, mm -hmm. but yet you do it anyway. Mm -hmm. That's presumptuous. Presumptive. Secret is hidden or kept from being known mm -hmm. by others. Mm -hmm. And fault is an error or a mistake. 
So presumptuous is bold or to 